Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about how to get a CRT for retro gaming. Now if you're new here, because you know, so I'm going to ring the bell. So I've talked about my CRT in some of the past videos, but today I wanted to talk about how to get one because it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. And I'm back at the old setup because I can't go to the old house or the new house right now because uh, my sister has COVID. So I'm going to be talking about how to get a CRT TV. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is the cost. So not very long ago, you could get a very nice CRT TV for basically nothing. Like, back in like five years ago, like, people really didn't see them as retro gaming TVs. They saw them more as just like pieces of junk. And like, some people kind of view it like that still, but like retro gaming, it's starting to become more popular to get a CRT TV for retro gaming. Because honestly, like, CRTs are my favorite way to do retro gaming because if you try to plug in a old school console older than probably the Nintendo 64 to a widescreen TV, I think it looks terrible for the most part. Whoa, I think I just figured something out, Beva. <laughs> what? <laughs> This sucks. <laughs> yeah, me. It really sucks. <laughs> this sucks more than anything that I've ever sucked before. Now, it might look good for some games or some game consoles like the original Xbox, but I just think it sucks to do that. I mean, some people kind of game their own ways, but that's how I do it with the CRT. But it's kind of weird because, like, the cost of them has just gone up. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Now, like, you could get lucky on Facebook Marketplace and maybe score one, but the thing is, is that I've seen more and more listings that are listing it as a retro gaming TV, which I hate that, because, like, like back in, like, the 80s, everyone had these TVs, and even in the 90s. Like, it's just, like, the fact that these Facebook Marketplace people are charging a lot of money for these CRT TVs, and then calling it a retro gaming TV. You could try to check Facebook Marketplace, but I don't think that's the best way to do it. The best way, in my opinion, is to get it from a curb or like a for, for free sign. Now, fun story to this is that that CRT that I got there recently, I found by a dumpster. And uh, all the inputs work and it works perfectly. Uh, like, it used to be that people would dump these CRTs, but it's starting to kind of get a more of a following to get them. That's kind of the best option, because, like, to find one at yard sales and stuff like that, because uh, I did actually find my very first CRT that's at the other house, or garage sale, and, like, it was free. I, I like, they were just trying to get rid of it. So, uh, like, yard sales and garage sales are the next best option compared to just finding it like by a curb and people just put it on a curb and say for free and it works. That's my opinion for how to get them best is uh, garage sales and like uh, curb alerts. That's what they call it where I live. It's kind of weird because another thing I want to talk about is for inputs on the TV, it might take a little bit longer for you to find a TV that has specific inputs. Now, I got lucky and I just got pretty much all the inputs that I need for my CRT. Like, it's everything that I need. So, now, it might be a little bit harder to find these TVs. My opinion is, is that it's most common to find uh, composite input TVs with RF, but if you want, like, the, a lot of inputs, it might take a little bit longer to find. So, like, if you want, like, S-Video, it might take a little bit more difficult to find. And I personally think it's even more difficult to find good TVs with component. But I just locked down into getting one with component. And if you plug in, like, a Wii or something, like, with composite versus component, component looks so much better. The seventh generation of consoles, like the Wii, Xbox 360, and uh, the PS3, if you can get component cables, they are way better looking. So, yeah, so, like... I just think that inputs really matter because there are some TVs, like I have one over here that was given to me, but it only takes RF. Like that's kind of like the crappiest way to do it because like there is like an RF adapter for the NES and also RF is for the Atari. But like if you want really good quality CRT, like that's not gonna cut it. That is one big pile of so I don't use that one very much uh, and it only has RF, it doesn't have composite. Now I think the most common ones are composite and RF, like those type of TVs, but 
if you want better picture quality and stuff, I just feel like waiting for an S video TV or seeing if there's like component uh, inputs for those also. Yeah, so inputs really matter because that can determine how a game looks even on a CRT. And another thing I wanna talk about is a curved screen versus a flat screen. So basically all the uh, TVs that I have are uh, flat screen, which is a little bit of a later model. Now, personally, like, I don't really like the curved screens that much. I mean, it can look good sometimes, but I prefer the flat screen. Now, it might not align perfectly with, like, the video to, like, the edges of the TV and stuff, which I think curved TVs are a little bit better at. Because, like, I'm so used to, like, widescreen TVs that are flat, I really do like that flat design. And, uh, another thing I want to talk about is the weight of the these things. So... Uh, the thing is, is that if you want like a really good CRT, you have to consider the weight because these things are insanely heavy. Like, especially the ones that go above like 20 inches. Like this one is actually a 27 inch uh, Sanyo. And this CRT was a pain in the butt to move because like, like I actually got it from, yeah, the dumpster. And like, I'm surprised it even wasn't able to lift it. Like the, and it's barely fit in my car. And like, it's just like, it's crazy how heavy those things are. So if you wanna get anything above like a 27 inch TV, I would recommend multiple people to help you because like, it's so much easier that way. Because you don't wanna risk an injury and you start to panic when you are carrying a CRT and you don't know where to put it. I recommend for putting a CRT, where to put it is uh, against walls, which I have over here, or against corners. You gotta figure out where to put the CRT before you carry it, because if you don't, a disaster might happen. So it's just like, I learned that the hard way because when I first got my old CRT that's at the other house, I didn't know where to move it. So it's just like, like you gotta have a good idea of where you're gonna put it. So yeah, that's one thing is that these things are insanely heavy, especially the ones that get above like 20 inches of display. Like some people are talking about like the PVMs and BVMs. So basically these TVs weren't, weren't really sold to the public. They were more like for like broadcasting studios and like medical equipment. You could try to find one of those, but it's insanely difficult to find without paying a hefty price tag. Like, they're starting to become collectible probably more than ordinary CRTs. Now, the thing is, is that I've heard the picture quality is awesome on a PVM or a BVM, but the thing is, is that you, uh, it doesn't typically accept the normal uh, composite input. Like, if you have like these adapters that you can, ha or you can buy where like you can connect them to them, like, I heard the picture quality is amazing. Like, even better than, like, the consumer CRTs. That's kind of, like, a separate side thing if you want to do that. But, like, I don't know if I'm ever going to find one because I don't even know if I need it. Like, it's just, like, I, it's very hard to find those at a decent price because, like, most of the collectors already have them and the ones that are in the wild, the people are charging so much money for them. So, it's just, like, if you want to go on that side of CRTs, go right ahead but I probably won't find one because I've been maybe trying to find one in the future, but they're just too expensive. So yeah, overall, uh, CRTs are getting more expensive. So if you want to game on a CRT for virtual gaming, I would recommend doing it soon or buying a CRT soon because like these things are going to get more and more expensive in my opinion, kind of like virtual gaming. Like I do see marketplace listings that are like regular like CRT TVs for a decent price. But it's not the inputs that most people want. So, uh, and also, like, if you want more inputs than what's on your TV, you probably might need a switch box or, like, a converter because I have the switch box back there that is, like, really awesome. Like, and it doesn't even require any power. I don't have to plug a separate power source in. So, like, if you want more inputs than a TV has, you might want to get a switch box which is so useful because i have all these consoles plugged in to this one crt it's way better that way so you're not limited to to those inputs on the tv itself so yeah that's one thing i recommend but don't get the cheap ones because most of the cheap ones are pretty bad so like get ones like from like an official brand that you know 
are like decently are aware of because I really like those ones and I really like the one I have because it's just like it doesn't require any power it's just like you plug the cables in and then you're good so thank you guys so much for watching I wanted to do this video for a while but I wanted to talk about this today so yeah thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys later peace